For this episode of Celebrating Science, we're going to look back in recent history to learn about environmental scientist Wangari Mathai and the lasting impacts her work has had in Kenya, across Africa, and globally. Wangari Mathai was born in Kenya in 1940, in a time and place where few girls were able to participate in the same schooling as their male peers and siblings. But Mathai attended with her brothers, and she was a motivated student, motivated that when an opportunity came for her to go to college, she was selected to fly across the world to attend Mount St. Scholastica in Kansas, where she majored in biology. Following her undergraduate degree, Wangari was still curious. She moved to Pennsylvania, where she received a master's degree in science. Eventually, she moved back to Africa where she would earn a PhD, becoming the first woman in East and Central Africa to do so. She would continue to break barriers when she became the first woman to be the chair of the veterinary anatomy department at the University of Nairobi, and again when she became an associate professor. While Wangari had been living and working in the United States, her home country of Kenya was undergoing rapid change. The country had been un under colonial rule by the United Kingdom until 1963, when Kenya became an independent nation. Along with independence came growth and development, and Wangari became concerned about the rapid pace of that development. Where trees and forests were removed for buildings and agriculture, the soil dried and blew away through a process called desertification. She noticed fewer birds and animals because they no longer had habitat. And desertification also impacted people. With desertification came poverty and hunger. People had to walk long distances to collect wood for their cooking and heating fires and couldn't keep their critical crops and gardens alive. Wangari was also concerned with the low social status of many women. She became active in women's groups and started thinking about ways to improve the quality of life for all Kenyans while particularly supporting women. She began collaborative tree planting projects and the creation of tree nurseries. This was a way for women to earn wages and for communities to rebuild their forests and soils and to once again supply their own needs for firewood, shade, water, and more. Her tree planting projects, eventually called the Green Belt Movement, paid women to plant trees and care for them. As the trees were planted, they provided many ecosystem services to the communities in which they were planted. Tree roots held the soil and kept it from blowing away. They also retained water in the soil that started to fill up the wells that people had once relied upon for water. Shade from the trees protected vegetable gardens and crops and reduced their need for water. People could collect firewood from the trees, which reduced the distances they had to travel. Gary's work supporting environmental conservation and poverty reduction spread across Africa and earned her international awards. She was the Nobel Peace Prize winner in 2004 and the United Nations Ambassador of Peace in 2009. In 2010, she founded the Wangari Mathai Institute for Peace and Environmental Studies at the University of Nairobi. Wangari Mathai died at the age of 71 in 2011, but her legacy remains. The Green Belt Movement has planted more than 51 million trees, and her books, speeches, and educational institutions continue to inspire change and community-based conservation and poverty reduction. If you would like to learn more about Wangari Mathai, she wrote several books, including a memoir and the process of starting the Greenbelt Movement. There are also many children's books about Wangari Mathai and her contributions to science.